<laughs> well, welcome back, my fantastic artistic friends, to another episode of Painting with Master Temple. What we've got up here is a black canvas, and it's vertical, which means it's in portrait. So we're going to get on to that shortly. But before we do, give this video a nice big thumbs up, will you? And subscribe to the channel if you're not done so already. It really does help us out. Right, let's bring you up here and show you what got done on the canvas. Happy days. So this canvas was an old canvas that of mine. I, had, I did a painting on there and I didn't quite like the image. So what I did, I tried sanding down most of the high spots and then I just re gessoed it in a bit of black acrylic and, uh, and allowed that to dry. Now it's all completely dry. So I have got some, uh, some wind gel down here, some Windsor and Newton's clear gel and white mixed. And I'm just going to add just a tiny touch. Oh, uh, we're going to walk in the woods once upon a time. And I'm going to do pretty much a similar sort of feel to that just here. So I'm just going to put a bit of white there, just a little spot. Not much, don't want much. Okay, because we can always add more. Now, I'm going to take a bit of that, a bit of that uh, clear gel with the, with the white mixed in with a bit of blue and red and then grab normal white a lot of normal white so i get a nice bluey purpley color pale purpley color there we go that's a bit better just there and then at the top i'm just gonna put in a nice sky it's gonna be a deep forest painting this so uh i think that black will give us a little bit of nice uh, a little bit of a nice support and you may make out some old bits and pieces of the previous painting on there it's only a tree down here or something like that didn't go to plan i thought why not recycle the canvas so a little bit of blue there we can always vibrant that up a little bit but we don't want much because there's going to be big trees either side of this but i just want maybe maybe a bit of blue there as well um, and i've taken some greens already so this is viridian sap green down there and i've got uh, a french one called verd tet i think it's called mix it into that oh there's a bit of white as well in there maybe a bit of brown i'm just going to put a bit of green down the side here just plow it on. I know. Looks crazy, doesn't it? Looks crazy. Just plow it on at the side. And maybe at this side as well. So with the sky and the sides and everything all in place, I'm just going to take some burnt sienna and burnt umber. Okay, just on the filbert brush. And I'm just going to put some indications of some trees. You, know, you might not see this because it's quite dark. Dark on dark, we get nothing, right? But, well, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes just, just laying in some far away trees. Not going to look much just yet. Okay, so this is just burnt sienna. Okay, in fact, we need to just shape his path a little bit, I think. I know I had it there, but, but I'm going to change my mind and bring it out there. I want a big rock or something there. Okay, so with all the tree line all the trees all in place i'm just going to grab a bit more white to that i'm just going to grab a bit of cad yellow as well i've scraped off the wind gel and the uh the titanium white right i'm just going to mush in a bit of a bright spot just here just at the path's end right let's get a little bit crazy i'm going to take sap green okay just sap green that tet verde color whatever it is i don't know i'm just going to grab lots of this bit of whatever yellows up there we need to put some more yellow ochre out I forgot to do that okay and i'm just gonna dab on here plenty of paint just where his leaves are gonna be Okay, I know it looks like I'm hitting at random, but I'm, I'm not. I, well, I am and I am. I know his leaves are going to be somewhere up here. I'm going to have different coloured leaves as well, but 
just want to get a bulk of colour in. All right, so all I've done is just dampened off that big thick layer of, of green colour, various greens up there. And I just just dabbed it on. And I like like the effect it makes down here, and I like the fuzziness of some of these tree trunks as well. That, that dampening it off does. Okay, so what we're going to do is mix up a bit of colour now. So let's grab, let's grab where we can see a bit of, squeeze some ochre out. And I got rid of all that, that light colour as well. So I'm mixing up a bit of sap green, yellow ochre. And I'm going to work on a few of the distant trees. Okay. Uh, we'll start off, we're going to have to put some big trees in to cover the most of the area, but we just want a couple of, couple of branches out here that's got something on like that just push it in see it's sticking nicely this because we've dampened off the uh, the paint blotted it out remember this now is our wet coat for anyone that thinks it's not wet on wet painting it sure is Okay, so I'll just put a couple in there, like that. Vary the flavours. And where else do we want to be? Maybe push some in there as well. And the reason why I put the tree trunks in, but I haven't painted any highlights and shadows in, is so we can get all the leaves in. Then we can come back and put the highlight side of the tree on, on the shadow side of the tree. Like that, another one there, like so. Get me out of the way. Okay, so what I've got here a little bit of umbers, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, white, whatever blue colour we've got on that space there on this on this brush. I'm just going to pick out uh, some little highlights. Just just let and use the brush offhand. I mean, just 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 use it. Nice and light, hold it like a pencil. Not that you'd hold a pencil like that to write your name, <laughs> but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. And I'm just going to pick out some highlights now, just on some of these trees. I haven't completely finished the leaves, obviously, but uh, we've got something where we can make a little bit of a start. And I think as light, obviously, is coming from the middle, so we'll 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 change the highlight accordingly so just draw the brush around and because we can put a few highlights in here so the lights come in either side i think just graze the canvas if you've got any anything on the canvas you, you know any of the gray uh, green colors don't worry about that if it gets into the trees to the tree trunks Okay, I think we've got a branch coming off here, though I can't hardly see because of the, uh, the glare. I think it's there like that. Something along those lines. And uh, that's how we're going to do it. Now, when we go to do the, the shadow colour, we'll get another brush. So I'll just use this one for now and pick up a bit of that blue. Okay, just a bit of blue. Maybe make it a little bit more. We'll grab a touch of purple in red to so make it a purpley colour. Okay. And then just same again, just graze the cold side of the, the tree trunk. Dodge that leaf there. Down like that. And then we can marry them together really. Take a couple of shades in. And create a nice little tree trunk that way. We don't want that brush, so we'll just grab this. Let's grab as browns, and we'll just start to scrub in a nice path, just there, like that. Of course, it's going to be tight up the top, and where it finishes, we'll come round here. I think. Where did we have it? I've lost it now. I've lost this. There. It's going to get wider. 
and wider. So possibly maybe two thirds of the canvas wide at the base. So I'm taking a little bit of uh, white, yellow ochre, some of the brown as well, whatever color that is, just on this nice little brush. And we're going to put in just some highlights on this paper very delicately. Very delicately, just, just graze the canvas. It's a bit of a weird one because we can't have a shadow side and a highlight side on this path. What we can have is variants of colour. So we'll just lay this down. Just like that. And we will try to get a little bit of something. I don't want it I don't want it to, I've gone light then I can darken it off if need to. Remember the light's there, so it's going to be blasting straight through the wood. It's going to get a little bit darker as it picks up some of this undercolour further down here. I can start to shape the path as well by going around there. Might be quicker with a fan brush, but we're in no rush. Maybe there's some cast shadows lurking down here as well with all this woodland effect. All the trees and things. A bit looser down here. Oh, we're coming around. I'm going to have some rocks here. I'm not too fussed about that. This is where, on the old canvas, I think there was a fallen tree trunk there. And that, that's not a bad idea. Okay, down in this bottom corner. We're going to have some stones, so you may see a little bit of texture on the canvas, and that's because right here there was there was an old on the painting that I was talking about. That I sanded it all back, but but not too much. Um, and I try and get it over there. So it, it, I know I wanted a stone down here, so. I think that will give a nice bit of texture, so we'll just put some stonework in. Plus, we've got some sort of tree sat on top of this stone. Just shape them however we want, and then work some of this colour back. Virtually nothing down there. It's 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 almost it's almost dry. I think there is a bit of brown down there. To be honest, a bit of brown and blue, but we'll just shape it back. Very little paint, very little paint. There, like so. And you see, by just lightly grazing the canvas, we're going to get all sorts of textury sort of things happen without even having to do really much. Maybe that comes down there. Just blocks in that. Now what I'm going to do, grab some blue and white and make some shadows in this stone. Just, just push in. Like that. It's like it's coming alive, yeah? Bring it out. Pinker and toy. Is that there and a bit more on this one 
I'm going to purple it up as well, I think, because it's, it's quite close to us and I don't want it too cold close to us. So, in fact, I'll do that now. I'll grab a bit of, bit of red just to purple some of this up. And a bit too much red there. Sneaks in there. Like that. And then later on in the painting, when we get some of the, when we get some of the uh, linseed oil on the go, we can put some highlights, real vibrant highlights bouncing on the top of some of these stones. I think that'll look pretty epic. Okay, so with lots and lots of paint on the brush, I'm just putting some little dotty kind of leaves up here. I'm connecting each leaf and I'm making sure I'm leaving some of the sky showing through just up there. Right. And this big branch that's really creeping across the top of the forest, and there is some that come back up here as well. Like that. I'm going to change the flavour as well. I'm going to get some different colours in there as well. In fact, we'll do that now. In fact, we'll darken it off a bit with a little bit more sap green, I suppose. A bit of umber. And there are plenty of paint, lots of paint. That's mainly, as, from what I can see here, it's as close to the background colour that we already put down as I can work out. There's a lot of glare coming from the lights, you know. But I've just put different kinds of leaves. I've taken different brushes, used different techniques to, to put different leaves down. I think this will give another dimension to the painting. In fact, we'll get it darker still. So I'm just going to throw a little, maybe a touch of black into that as well. Darken it off a little bit more, a little bit of blue. Plenty of paint up here. Now I know what you're thinking. There is no twigs on any of these trees, but I don't want to add any twigs or anything like that just yet because that means thinning the paint down. And I don't want to thin any paint down if I can help it. Because once I start putting thin paint on top of thick paint, I've got to keep going thinner and thinner and thinner. And I don't, I don't particularly want to do that. I want lots of paint on here. So we've got, you know, lots of, lots of texture. I can feel, I want to be able to feel the painting. There we go. So I'm just going to keep building up these these dotty kind of leaves as we go. Okay, the last thing to do now is just wherever we think we need a, a twig, a branch, with some thin oil paint, we will put one in and we'll just sneak some branches off here and there and everywhere and of course we need to to light enough those stones right down at the foreground don't we i think we'll have this branch this might be a dead branch comes out there like that you know what this little foggy scene needs right down here it needs a little mushroom or so. Just tuck it in there like that. And then give the mushroom a nice mushroomy friend. So it's just a dome. Maybe there's a couple more bits and pieces there. And then I'm going to grab some brown and just try and shade in a little touch on the shadow side there. It's quite thin, so you, I don't really want to mess it up too much, but I think that'll work. A little woodland mushroom. A few more sticks and twigs down there, and I think mm, we're about finished. Well, wow. 
That is certainly one big walk in the woods, isn't it? Very enjoyable painting to do. If you do this one, please tag me in a photograph, mate. Socials are down in the description. And if you have liked this one, give me a nice big thumbs up. Please leave me a comment as well. I love reading your comments. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really does help us out. But until next time, you take care of yourself. Stay safe. Happy days. Bye-bye.